If you adopt these two ways of life, my dear brothers and sisters, wallahi, 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 nothing and no one else can possibly take control of you, as I said, enslave you, dictate your inner being or your outer being or prevent you from your true beauty and self-esteem. Try it. Try it one day and keep going with it, inshallah. Let us now look at the world, at the world of image and beauty and what Islam has to say about it all. Okay, let's first of all go for definitions. What is self-image anyway? What is it? Well, this is from the encyclopedia and I'll just read it to you. They say that self-image is the mental picture that you think people will like you or accept. You got a picture in your head and you say, hmm, I've got to look like this. This is how people will accept me. This is how people will like me today. Just for today. Or at least for, these, for this time. In this year, 2007 fashion year. And you think to yourself what kind of attributes you should have and what you should look like that people like or accept, such as your height, your weight, your hair color, your gender, your IQ score, if you're double jointed or not, etc. etc. You'll think about how people will judge you. You think, am I skinny? Am I fat? Am I attractive? Am I weak? Am I strong, intelligent, masculine, feminine? Am I stupid or am I smart? Am I likable or not? etc. etc. And usually this can lead you to self-hate. You can hate yourself if you think about it too much. You start really hating yourself and you think, I was fish, I was never born. Some of them sadly even get into the into kufr, saying, why did Allah make me this way? Why? Why couldn't He have made me like so and so? Ya Allah. Let's look at body image. Body image is your own perception of how you physically look. So now we're talking about what most problems happen. Some people may see an I need to point this out to you. Some people may see an unattractive person very attractive in their eyes. While others may see attractive people unattractive in their eyes. Don't let yourself be taken over by what you know, the sources you're looking at say. You never know. I have seen many couples where the husband is very attractive and handsome and their wife is not. Some, I've heard some brothers say, Subhanallah, how did he end up with someone like that? I've seen and the talk, of, some, the talk of, 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 of attractive women who married men who are short, fat and ugly in the eyes of people. They think to themselves, how did they end up with that? They can't understand. So, or it boggles their mind. Or whatnot. <laughs> and you hear that most often. I used to hear that in Lebanon, back where I was, where all the gossip happens. Brothers and sisters, sisters and brothers in Islam, the things that influence your mental state and thoughts, what are they? I'll tell you it's some of the things that really do have a problem that really cause this as well. Other than the West, I need you to listen brothers as well. Your spouses can make a difference about yourselves. Your friends, your family, your community, the TV and magazines, and as I said before, on top of the list, I always say the fashion and modeling world. And they put the whole world's mind into thinking that they have to be a certain image as I said before. Spouses should complement one another. SubhanAllah, the Prophet ﷺ encouraged this so much. Ibn Abbas used to say, I love to decorate myself for my wife just as much as I love her to decorate herself for me. And we complement one another. The Prophet ﷺ used to always compliment his wives, all of them. Every time he saw them, compliments some particular feature in them. What's wrong with it? She's your wife. Your life partner. The one who has offered everything. Sacrificed lots of things in her life that if she was without you, she could have done. What kind of beauty are you looking at, my dear brother? I address the brothers first because most problems come from them about this issue. My brother, don't let me tell you where this develops from why you always want to look at beauty we'll talk aside when our sisters are not here let's see what Islam says about yourself about the human being A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan rajim bismillahir rahmanir rahim Allahu alladhi ja'ala lakumul arda qarara as-samaa' bina'an wa 
صوركم فأحسن صوركم ورزقكم من الطيبات ذلكم الله ربكم فتبارك الله رب العالمين which means Allah is the one who made the earth stable and lifted the sky above and he fashioned you and gave you your beautiful picture meaning the face and the image of the human being وصورakum he gave you a beautiful image فأحسن صورakum he made your surah, your picture beautiful without an exception at all anybody so glory to the one who is the best the Lord of all mankind Allah also says in another verse which you all recite he swears an oath four times وَالتِّينِ وَالزَّيْتُونِ وَطُونِ سِينِينِ وَهَذَا الْبَلَدِ الْأَمِينِ by the figs Allah can swear by anything he wants and by the olives and by Mount Sinai and by this land this purified land what is Allah about to say لَقَدْ خَلَقُنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي أَحْسَنِ تَقْوِيمِ we have surely created the human being in the best form and figure we are much nicer good looking than the jinns and the shayateen when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Adam alayhi salam he made him into clay first before he put the soul into him and Iblis the leader of the jinns he used to come up to him and kick him and he used to look at him carefully and say for God to create you this way he must have wanted an enormous purpose for you for you to be created this way and Allah says وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي آدَمْ we have honored the son of Adam even above the angels he ordered the angels to prostrate to our father Adam so who is there out there who dares to say that Allah's creation is ugly it's haram to say that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam never ever ever even signaled signaled that to anybody is ugly saying that anybody is ugly or to any particular feature of this ever in his life to anybody Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also said that the shaitan in order to ruin what Allah created he said I will command them the people to change what Allah has created I'm going to command them they can change their features and they shall change their appearance and he even went to the animals as well and he said I will make them clip the ears of animals this is haram فَلَا يُغَيِّرُنَّ خَلْقَ اللَّهِ I'm going to make them change the beautiful creation of Allah Iblis acknowledge that we are beautiful are people changing their image today or not? plastic surgery, cosmetic, I don't know what fake up, I mean make up <laughs> did you guys get that? it was meant to be a joke let's look at people's perception my brothers and sisters and brothers the idea that people want to look so good is because of people's perception I mean I don't know if this would sound right but let's just I'll have a jab at it if you were on, a, on an island by yourself and there was no one there do you think that you would worry about your appearance that much? just think about it and I'll just let you to sort of think about it and ponder I don't have a real answer but you just think about it my brothers and sisters I have to admit something self image and beauty on the outside is actually important in Islam I'm going to say that and it's true and some people are more attractive than others that is also true I'm not going to sit here telling you there's you know you know that uh, everything you see is attractive some people find different things attractive more than others and so on but however there are things which are naturally unattractive and there are things that are just unattractive to certain people while attractive to others the things that are naturally unattractive are the things which Islam pointed out to and told us to take care of for example, Prophet ﷺ said they are called fitra ashrum min al fitra he said ten things are part of fitra and other hadith seven parts are from fitra what are they? such as clipping the nails um, cutting the, the, um, the uh, you know, pubic hair under the arms in the private area uh, shaving them up and removing them sorry uh, washing the areas where dirt can always you know, gather on your body um, circumcision uh, bathing 
uh, you know, trimming the moustache and around the mouth for the men so that the food doesn't sort of hang onto their beards and on their moustaches and all that and having a tidy appearance and so on and so forth. These are natural things which anyone, even if you think you're not attractive, everyone in Islam can do them and you can transform yourself. Nice perfume for the men, for the men outside, perfume for the women that can only be smelt on the skin outside of the house but inside of a house you can put lots of perfume on. Don't go overboard because then, you know, even really a lot of perfume can become unattractive as well.